Hello and welcome, young Padawans. I'm Joe, here with me is my co-host, Stan. Greetings. And for today, we're going to, for the first video of this channel, get started on reviewing the Star Wars Tales of the Jedi comic strip, or graphic novel, I think we should call it. This is a really great story. It's classic Star Wars at its finest. This came out in the 90s and was basically part of the Lucasian part of the kind of lore and whatnot. And it's part of the stories that are hinted at in the first in the first Star Wars novel, which is episode 4 from 1976. The novel, I mean, not the movie. The episode 1 novel hints at the events in this comic. And you have, of course, the Knights of the Old Republic 2 that hints at it. A couple of things to note. The main characters, because there are several, are Odon Erd, the greatest Jedi to ever live, and Jory and Gav Daragon. And the thing is, the two are children of explorers, and they quickly lose mom and dad due to an accident or some mysterious event and they vow to become explorers they're not very successful at it for a long time and lose boatloads of credits and keep getting their credit extended by arba a generous natured hut who feels a paternal sense of responsibility towards them this, of course, bites them in the tail a lot because they can't pay off their loans ever. So this often frustrates him. On the other hand, he eventually starts pressing slight charges against them because what's he to do? That said, he's not portrayed as a bad person, just as a frustrated cre creditor and banker who's trying to be generous to these two. And they're just not able to make the payments with their continuous get-rich-quick schemes that don't work out. Gav and Jory, though, are not horrible people, so much as they are very mistaken. That said, they are very talented pilots, just very, very foolish. Odon Ur, for his part, has to reluctantly participate in a war for Empress Teta's domination of the Sinagar system, because she wants to unify the various planets under her rule. The trouble is, while she brings a lot of positive virtues to her rule, such as wise rule administration and a good legal structure, as well as a great deal of wealth, the trouble is that Odon Ur is rapidly traumatized in the war and just generally unhappy fighting in wars. He'd rather be studying and researching and chronicling history. He is at his core a bookworm, but that said, he is the most powerful light Wheel, light side wielding force sensitive there will ever be in Star Wars that said he ends up quickly discovering battle meditation which he uses in the wars to secure a quick victory and try to minimize casualties though he feels responsible for the casualties that there were and we get the siblings traveling off into space where upon they discover to their horror the sith the descendants of the dark jedi banished from the republic space well sphere of influence after the great schism which divided jedi versus dark jedi the sith have since become a powerful people and forged a large empire. After a century of golden rule under Marco Ragnos, they are now on the precipice of civil war and self-destruction, as two major contenders contend for the throne of Marco Ragnos. They are Nagasato and Ludo Kresh. Ludo Kresh is the more conservative politician of the two, thinking that they need to consolidate the empire as it is, not risk it on risky ventures outside of Sif space. Nagasato, though, dreams of conquest, 
not realizing that Doom, there's a Doom cast over his head and, and over the head of the Sith Empire, should he undertake his ambitions. But he's so greedy, that's all he can think about, his ambitions. The two explorers arrive upon the scene, but are quickly found out and captured by the Dark Lords and their servants. Because of Mark Aragnos, who appears to them as a ghost, warning them of the dangers and perils of the Jedi and the Republic, and telling them, unite your forces together. Stop fighting. Only together can you conquer the galaxy. Which convinces them not to do this. They capture Gav and Jory, mistreat them for months, and, of course, Nagasato decides to stage a breakout, but pretend that it's the Republic that did it, but he does so so sloppily that Ludo Kresh quickly discovers the truth. That said, Nagasato destroys his own mentor so that he can stage himself as the aggrieved defendant, so that most of the Dark Lords are swayed by pity for him, so that they elect him the next Dark Lord. The problem is, Ludo Kresh discovers the truth, revolts, and brings over half the Dark Lords to his side, or at least almost half. Nagasato, aware of all these going-ons, cackles and doesn't care. Now, he soon starts turning Gav to the dark side, as Jory and Gav got some basic Jedi training in their childhood, but they didn't pursue it due to impatience. Jory regrets this decision. Gav did, but is mistaken into thinking and led into thinking that what he is learning right now is Jedi arts, not realizing it's dark side arts. That said, he's not fully committed as he still longs to reunite with his sister and take her away from the Sith. Jory escapes from the Sith Empire with Nagasato's help in the midst of the civil strife between him and Ludo Kresh. And Ludo Kresh is seemingly killed by his own Masasi slaves who turn upon him or so it seems, with it left fairly clear that he died, except he didn't. Yeah, I know, I'm giving a spoiler there, but he survives to rebel another day and unite the surviving Dark Lords behind him so that he's crowned the Dark Lord of the Sith, so that Nagasato is technically an usurper in their eyes, so that you have two different branches of the Sith that start to form here. That said, nothing was ever done with the plot point of the Ludo Kresh line of Sith Lords. More because it was never really explored. A shame, but that happens in stories. That said, Nagasato, though, goes on to wage a great war against the Republic as the Dark Lord of the Sith. In turn, the Republic begins to prepare itself as there are glimpses into of the future darkness to come that they become aware of with empress teta prepping up her people for her war having just started getting them back into mining which is their main trade um and a source of wealth while odon ur who has by this time killed a man to save jorian gav when they were living on the streets and they're assaulted by men who desired Jory. Odon Ur feels ashamed and doesn't want to fight anymore, but he's going to be pressed into warfare service, drafted essentially against his will once more. So that that's the entire story of this graphic novel. And it's a really great graphic novel, but it's incomplete because the other the second volume has to be has yet to be read here. And I'll turn it over to you, Dan. Do you think we should rate this now or rate the whole thing together? I think the whole thing because we don't get the complete story here. Okay. It's like we're dealing with a couple of chapters rather than the entire story. No problem. That's what we'll do, folks. And... I really love uh, Odoner's adventure and the civil war between Ludocrash and uh, Nagasato. Nagasato. It's very fascinating, isn't it? How you just 
have two different factions, both with their own point of view. And I find it very interesting that, as you said earlier, before we started recording, the, the Sith should have chosen Kresh, the more conservative of the two Dark Lords, who saw it as it's too risky to risk a war now. We have to follow the tenets and the teachings of Marco Ragnos. It was good enough for Ragnos. We have to do that. Now, Ragnos did expand the Empire a little, but also conserved and consolidated what the Sith already had and brought it to its greatest point of expansion and wealth. So that Ludo Crush is looking at Marco Ragnos and seeing it as, we have to do that. It's worked for 100 years. We have to keep working at it in that way. Nagasato, though, does not agree and is power-hungry and hungry for conquest and dreams of engraving his name in history. Oh, he gets engraved, but as an idiot and a failed conqueror who, well, he's a little more than a footnote in Odon Ur's history, which is pretty funny. You know what, what else I find a little funny and odd? Hmm? Someone actually listened to a Jedi's warning. Oh, yeah, that happens so rarely in the universe. So that it's a little funny that when the Jedi come to Empress Teta and say, there's, there's going to be trouble soon. Well, I, get a, I guess I better prep immediately. It's a little funny, yeah. But she's more like a Theoden-type character where she heeds the words of wisdom of the wise men around her. She has the wisdom to listen to them and knows, okay, I have to take this advice at face value and actually give it the due respect that it deserves. So, oh, and just a note, I really like the Daragons, just to throw that out there. I really like them. And I have the fan theory that they're, or at least Jory, is the ancestress of Luke Skywalker and Leia and Anakin and them. And the reason being is just, it would be very Lucasian to have this entire thing be poetic where the the Sith begin with the ancestors of Anakin and Luke. And it ends in the original trilogy era with the current day Skywalkers. Where my theory is just that the Daragons are the ancestors. Because Gav goes over to the dark side, is not entirely dedicated to the ways of the Sith. And sacrifices himself in the end to save the day. With Jory having been the one to save him. And she lives on with the rest of out the rest of her life, uh, with her Jedi training. A very I think she gets Jedi training. It's been a while since I read the second volume. She ends up living out the rest of her days a happy woman, and recounting the story of the bravery of her brother and how he was redeemed in the end. So that her story is a direct mirror to that of Luke Skywalker, and I just think that it'd be very ironic. And very poetic if she was Luke's ancestress. So that, you know, you get this direct connection between the two stories. Uh, that of Nagasato versus Gav and Jory. Just as there is the story of Palpatine, Anakin, and Luke. It seems very, very Lucas-like. And I would love to meet him and just ask him if this was the case. If this was the idea. Who knows? But only Luke, George Lucas may know. <laughs> but anyways, tell us what you think of this idea and of this video. And we'll get back to you with the second volume in a little bit. So don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button. As though you were Nagasato crushing his enemy Ludo Crush.